that, 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 that was exponential. What was it? 200,000 to $69 million. And, and just in that system, let alone it. Very, very interesting, Edwin. And I think we'll have a lot of questions uh, for, for Edwin. Um, and I think you've been quite revolutionary. You've really reinvented uh, uh, um, returns, fund management. And you've, what I find interesting is that you've shared a very high rate of return with your investors, which I don't think anyone else has ever considered. Let me take some questions from the audience. Has anyone got any questions that they're keen to ask? Hello. Thank you so much. My name is Maina. And uh, that was a very elaborate uh, presentation. Uh, out of the 3,000 investors in the 64.9 billion you said, I would wish to know what percentage of young people are in that, uh, the 3,000. And then uh, in, the, in the investment of the, um, the 100,000, I would wish to know uh, by the time maybe a project is finishing, and the 18, whether the 18 percent is constant, and uh, after the project is done, do I get back my money or I continue earning from it? Thank you. I've also had a question off social media. <coughs> Are you considering a listing at the Securities Exchange? Good morning. morning. Uh, my name is Duncan. So I wanted to ask Edwin, how long do you think you're going to be in Saito? How long is he going to be at Saito? Yes. <laughs> what, before he gets bought out by somebody? <laughs> Okay, um, what percent of our investors are young people? You know, the, the good thing is that every time you go out and talk to people, you get challenged and you get new things that you need to look at. The real answer is I, I, I don't know. We've never really tracked that data. But one of the reasons why I asked uh, my team to join me is that whenever I don't know a question, if anyone knows, I will pass it on to them. Does anyone know? I think the question is, what's is the definition of young? If the definition of young is below 35 percent, uh, 35 years of age, sorry, 35 years of age, I would say our average investor's age is, up, is likely it's at close to 40. That's the average investor age. But we, we will actually now go look at our investors and look at what are the demographics. Now, 18 percent. Remember when you sign up for one year with the 100,000, the commitment is to give you 18% per annum. The vehicle is between yourself and the real estate. You don't have to worry when the real estate will be done because remember, the money does not all of it come at the end. Most of our real estate is pre-sold. Uh, when people ask, but how are you able to service short-term liabilities with a long-term investment? Because they are looking at the real estate itself. What they don't look at is behind that real estate is largely sales contract, where people have paid 10% deposit and they are giving as money on a quarterly basis. So by the time your deposit, uh, your placement, in, uh, your investment placement uh, matures in one year, we are collecting constantly from the person who bought the real estate off plan to be able to pay you. So you don't have to worry about the brick and mortar, the way it is structured off plan sales with sale agreements paying quarterly is what we use to service uh, the liability. Are we listing? Certainly, we are actually in the process of uh, listing, but by introduction, we are not collecting money yet because our view is that we don't think that we can get the valuation that we want at this particular point. So we list for it by introduction for price discovery to build the brand, and then at some point later, maybe two to three years from now, then we shall sell a stake to actually get money in the market but for now we are just listing by introduction. We are actually engaged with the uh, NAC and the regulators on that. Uh, interesting question from Duncan. How long will, will I be at Cyton? Any of my team members will be able to answer that question. I always say I'll be here. I will leave the day I get somebody who can do this job better than I can. I'm very eager uh, the moment that person comes because to sustain, I'm a shareholder in the brand, uh, to sustain value you always have to get uh, new blood, new ideas, new energy. So uh, the job is always uh, open. When I, the people who work around me, when I talk to them, I always tell them if they think they can do the job, they should just tell me and I'll step aside. But until then I remain the boss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Public Speaking Coach Caroline Derito. Good morning. Good morning. Edwin, you discussed when people talk badly about the company or the thinking. My question is, how do you handle when people talk badly about the thinker? How do you handle when people talk badly about Edwin? Great question. Good question. And particularly because we seem to be have linguistic warfare out here at the moment. I don't know what's going on, how we're talking about everybody. I find it really weird. Don't you? Uh, good morning, my name is Grace. Um, regarding the products that Saiton are offering, I didn't know that you're also in the uh, money market, so I'd like to know more about it. Um, and also, perhaps you can, because I, I, our Chama, our Chama does a lot of money market uh, and we bank with uh, Britain, so you can tell me more about it and we can consider coming on board and the rates and the and the interests that you're paying. Thank you. Good morning. Morning. Uh, my name is Maureen. Uh, as a continuation to the youth question, so he talks about Saiton having a cooperative society or something like that, where young people like me who don't necessarily have a lot of money can come in and be part of the Saiton brand. So can you explain more on that, please? Before I hand over to Edwin, I just want to add something to what you've just asked. In, you know, when, when I was quite young, my mum was passed away. And uh, I, rem I just started working and I was earning a lot of money and she always told me, Ali Khan, it's not how much you earn, it's how much you save of what you earn. And just think about that. If you earn a million dollars and you're saving nothing, you're overspending, you are going to be worse off than somebody who's earning $50,000 and saving half of it. And over time, that 50,000 guy is going to be worth a lot more than the other person. And that's a, I think that philosophy is great to hear from you. Edwin, I'm going to turn to you. Okay, uh, starting with Caroline, and I think Caroline did something that's good that we should all do. It's always good to know who's in the room. So in addition to your name, a little bit about what you do. It helps put things into context. Now, when people talk badly, uh, it's a challenging one because I also can talk badly. So a lot of times I also talk badly back to them. Uh, <laughs> but then uh, the PR guys, our, our PR consultants, and even the chair of HR has banned me from uh, responding to these people. But sometimes I can't help it. I'm like, hey, they won't fire me anyway. <laughs> so I shall still respond. But the best way we know is results and execution. Somehow we've always been a brand of defending ourselves. Remember when we uh, left our previous uh, employer and we don't have any issues with them, uh, Grace is an uh, investor at Britain's Money Market Fund. We had 12 lawsuits and we asked ourselves, but these guys really know that uh, there's nothing of theirs that we have. Why would somebody do this? It's really one thing and one, one thing alone to break the team spirit. Because remember when we left, it was a whole team, CEO, C CIO, head of legal, investment manager, then other people then followed. Then we said, this is really targeted to break the team and uh, end the initiative. So the best way to do this is to remain, co uh, the best way to fight this is to remain cohesive tell our story, find pockets in the market that nobody is occupying. So for example, that was the origin of the site on weekly, the weekly research that we produce. We say there's nobody who's producing rigorous research consistently. If we then produce this research, the initiative to try and portray, to portray as, as fraudsters then won't work because people will sit around and say, but if they are no good, how come then they are producing great analysis? When I go meet these people, they look very uh, normal. So the best way we've always been defending ourselves is just by being transparent, executing, delivering results. After the legal challenges, we then had to deal with uh, professional bodies at the 
highest level of the firm, everybody is uh, collectively, people are members of the CFA Institute, CPA, LSK, all manner of uh, professional bodies. So we also start, stood accused in front of those professional bodies. We went again, being transparent, showing who we are, putting the evidence. That was the second, first year legal, second year professional bodies. Third year, then we had to deal with regulators. We've had to um, explain our business model to every single regulator, whether it's SASRA, Ministry of Cooperatives, CMA, CB, uh, CBK. Uh, again, just being transparent and showing uh, your results. And I know you asked uh, personally, it is very consistent how we deal with things at the firm, how we deal with things as a, as a team, and how I deal with things as an individual. Just put your thinking on the table, put your execution on the table, and you also have to grow thick skin. You'll be called all manner of things. Uh, if, you, if you just go to Twitter and see what Robert Alai Nyakundi calls us, initially it gets to you, but then you realize, well, if you're going to be in the public eye, it cuts. Both, uh, both ways. I've all, I'm now waiting, it's, they've been consistently attacking the business, the brand. One of the things that you now realize is that sooner or later it's going to get into personal family matters. There's nothing you can do. It comes with the, it comes with the job. But as I always say, we are always learning. So if there are any ideas, we are more than happy to take them. Grace on the money market fund, what I said is we offer better returns than uh, unit trust, money market funds, bank deposits offer. We never tell anybody that you have to have all your money in alternative investment or structured products. You have to sit, uh, diversification is important, say what portion will I put in equities, fixed income, bank deposits, unit trust at a place like Britam, which is a great brand. We have no issues with uh, Britam at all as a brand. We worked very hard for the brand. It gave us a platform. We are proud of our time there and we are proud of the brand. Our issues are really with around four men who happen to be shareholders of that brand. Um, so look, look at uh, CMS as another uh, opportunity to invest uh, your money. Then uh, the question from Maureen, Cyton Cooperative. We have members of uh, the financial advisory uh, team. We are still in the process of perfecting the registration of that uh, product, but we don't turn away people who want to uh, join at the, what I would call, bottom of the pyramid. You have to start somewhere, even if it's a thousand uh, shillings. The issue is being consistent all the time until you get to a point where you have the minimum 100,000, then you move to the one uh, million uh, league. That was very interesting what you were saying, and I think you know a lot of people find it difficult. I mean, you know, my very good friend is Bob. Bob's not well, and sometimes you read what people are saying, and you go, "This is just insanity," and not true either. And it's just very hurtful, I think. Um, so on that point, I admire the way you've dealt with your situation, and I think at the end of the day, it's success, right? People are fighting. The more successful you become, the more you might get this because people see you doing so well. Good morning everyone. Good morning. Uh, my name is Derek Yaku and I'm a, I'm a young techpreneur running a startup called Boozit. Uh, now, first of all... What's it called? Boozit. Boozit? Yes, it's a drinks delivery platform. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> first of all, I'd like to you know, appreciate Edwin for the tremendous job you've done with, with the site on. I've been following a lot of what you do and I actually read your article on uh, on Forbes and uh, specifically how you're explaining how uh, companies can thrive within an, you know, uncertainty like elections and all that. And I must say that was very admirable. Now my first question is of course with uh, your specific interest in young entrepreneurs uh, with the entrepreneurship program. How far do you go apart from you know, mentorship and networks? Because you know, one of the biggest challenges of young entrepreneurs like us is usually funding. Do you go ahead and probably look into how you can fund these the startups, and then uh, you mentioned Mpesa, Uber, Google, perhaps and Facebook. These are tech, tech companies, right? And you know, maybe the conversations could be shifting from uh, brick and mortar real estate investment towards techpreneurship because uh, the opportunity in tech is very, very tremendous. So, uh, within your experience, then I will ask, uh, of course, with that frame of, re of, of reference. How do you think we can shift the focus of a lot of established investors and new investors into investing in technology? Because I think that is what differentiates us uh, 
the state start of culture in Kenya with what happens perhaps in Silicon Valley and other parts of the world, usually the investment culture. Thank you. My friend from CNBC there in the pink, Sammy. Good morning. My name is Charles. I'm a journalist with CNBC in, Af in Kenya. Uh, what are your views, Edwin, on the rate of return on uh, real estate in the medium to long term? Because, I mean, I think we've read a bit of research from different people uh, looking specifically on uh, residential. And all. I know you said you're more on mixed-use projects. Uh, but we've seen prices softening, especially this year. Maybe it's because of politics, but what are your views, medium, long term? Thank you. Morning. Um, Charlotte, I'm a student, and in Saiton Foundation, you talked about mentorship and training. So I'm interested to know more about it, and I'm sure the other youths are also interested. And by the way, given what uh, Edwin was saying, I would have thought that uh, about hiring out of university, I'm sure there are lots of people here who should be engaging with Edwin about that opportunity. Edwin? Yeah, let, let me start with uh, Charlotte, because that's the easiest one. If you just go to our website, uh, site on young leaders program, it really de de describes how you apply uh, into the internship program. We are always uh, hiring. I think we've trained almost 500 people in uh, the last uh, three years, but it's a rigorous program. Uh, you have to have a minimum of uh, B plus in KCSE. Then you have to do our aptitude test, which is online. Then you go through an oral interview, and then for every one or two positions that we are offering, we'll hire 12 to go through a, a 12 week program and we'll make, make an offer to uh, one or two. Uh, at the end of this, if you just go to our desk there and you ask them how to get into the CYLP program, they'll give you information. And actually, some, I always encourage us to bring the brochures for CYLP. I don't know if they have them. If they don't, just leave your email there, send it. Uh, you and it's it is something I would really encourage uh, people to do I mean I always remember that I started off at a, as an intern in uh, in uh, KPMG in New, in New Jersey and that made a lot of difference then Charles uh, from CNBC about return and you use the right word you say it's softening the prices are not dropping they are not plunging there is no journey uh, worth taking, whether it's relationships, whatever journey that you are undertaking, construction, that is a straight upward sloping line. It's always up and down. Now, when we look at the, the uh, fundamentals, whether it's population growth, demographic, demographics, where we are located as a, as a region, all the underlying fundamentals, ease of doing business, governance indices are pointing the right direction. Uh, they always say real estate or land is one thing that we don't make more of it, yet the number of people continues to increase. So it's a question of which pockets of places you pick. I keep going back to the Alma. Go look at the location. It's densely populated. There are roads that are coming. There's the northern bypass. There's a western bypass that's going to connect to the northern bypass. So if you look at the, the prospects of the region, if you approach it through research, I think in the medium to long term, the future for real estate is bright. But of course, it's challenging. You have to execute and deliver uh, the, the product. Eric's question, more broad-based. There's techpreneurship, entrepreneurship uh, involved. Maybe if I were to just take a step back and you look uh, globally, uh, a place like uh, Europe, very uh, little returns, 0 to 1% GDP growth. US, uh, South America, 2% uh, GDP. Yes, they're still growing 2 to 3% 2 to uh, GDP growth, but the rate of growth is, go is, growing, is going down. Then you look at where are you left with economic growth. That's the Asia, China areas. Uh, yes, you get 5% GDP growth, but the rate of growth uh, continues to slow. Every year they are growing slower than they grew the previous year. So the place that is left where you have sustainable 5 6% GDP growth for the foreseeable, for the foreseeable future, uh, uh, 10, 15 years uh, 
for going ahead is Sub-Saharan Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa has three centers of growth, Western Africa, Southern Africa countries like Botswana, Mozambique, Angola, and then Eastern Africa, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, South Sudan, Rwanda. If you look at those three centers of growth, the place that has the most diverse growth is Eastern Africa because Western Africa, uh, Nigeria, Ghana, and then Southern Africa are still more commodity driven. If you come to Eastern Africa, you have active financial services, technology, real estate, construction, agriculture. So within Sub-Saharan Africa, the place to be is Eastern Africa. And within Eastern Africa, the place to be is Kenya. That's the growth powerhouse. And within Kenya, the place to be is Nairobi. And that's exactly where you are seated. So from a global perspective, you are in a very good place to be doing business. So then what is the challenge? The challenge tends to be execution. We don't have people who are really focused on getting things done 100%. We are okay with 70%, 80%. We have a lot of issues with uh, ethnicity. We, we, we have such a growing economy, it shouldn't matter where you come from or what tribe, it should just matter what are your ideas and are you willing to execute it. Uh, then we also like to take shortcuts. When you meet an entrepreneur and you ask them, how much of your family's money is in this? How much of your own money? A lot of people don't want to put their own money. A lot of people don't want to leave their own jobs. For Saiton, at the highest level, we cannot do any other business. I can't run a matatu, I can't do farming. All, we have to put everything into the farm. So that when, if the farm is ruined, we are going to be ruined financially. <coughs> so I think if you have a good idea, you have to test your idea against data. If you have a good idea, you're willing to put your all and you're willing to execute. I still believe that you will get capital. But you also have to be realistic. Most people cannot be entrepreneurs. So you have to find the right opportunity. You have to find the right team. Alipan keeps referring to Edwin, but in reality, Cyton is a production of a team. So you have to have the right team. And as Jack Welch says, you have to execute like hell. Execution is not easy, it's 24 hours. So the reality is that most of us will not be interpreted. I don't know the percentages, but if I were to be asked, I would say less than 2% can actually be entrepreneurs. So you have to be honest. I'm not talking about you as Michael, but anybody who wants to be an entrepreneur. Do I really have the data that this opportunity makes sense? Do I have the strategy to attack this opportunity? In our case, the opportunity was structured products. What was the strategy? Coupling up investment management and real estate development. Where was the team? It's the team that um, uh, banded together from our previous employer and came to site on. And are we executing? We are very focused on execution. If you have those three or four, I don't see an issue getting capital because then you talk, on the other side, we talk to people who are in this market and they're saying, I can't get an opportunity to invest in. So people with capital are saying, I can't find opportunities. People who want capital are saying, I can't find capital. The fragment, fragmentation or the gap in between is those things I'm talking about. Is it the right opportunity? Are you approaching it with a unique strategy? Do you have a, a team? And are you executing like hell? And do you have everything about yourself financially put in that, uh, put in that initiative? Any person who has that, I'm almost certain that they'll get capital. Ourselves, we don't invest in startups for one very simple reason. We must return that 18%. Our capital is leveraged capital, so we cannot take venture capital risk, at least not yet. At some point, once we've raised equity into the firm, when we are less leveraged, then we can take that risk. But right now, we must be able to return the 18%. And the best place to return the 18% because 70% of our money goes to real estate still remains real estate investment because and pre-sold we, we can't even build then go look for buyers we have to sell 10-15% off plan once we've pre-sold it then we are fairly certain that as the owner of the apartment pays their off plan uh, real estate, uh, their off-plan apartment, then we'll be able to pay the person who we, whom we have pr uh, promised the 18% return. And did I hear you correctly? Let me ask you a question. Yesterday I was at this B team, uh, which is uh, something, a Richard Branson um, experiment. And Jeremy Awori was asked this question saying that, you know, Kenyans are entrepreneurs, and so many employees uh, will be doing 
uh, working for you, but also have something else that they've got, a business or a hustle, etc. And that this is a big challenge for people in companies. You know, in, in, uh, uh, you know they might be spending, have, having to spend time dealing with a situation which is outside the scope of sighting. And you were just saying, look, we're all fully invested if we sink or swim. Uh, is, is that, uh, do you mind just answering that? How do you deal with that in that you want 100% of your employee bandwidth to be working on your business? And, and how are you, you dealing that, with that as a CEO of your business? I would be interested to hear what your response was. Because Jeremy also said something else which I would like to ask, which I found interesting. He said 87% of people are not fully engaged in the job that they're doing. Right, which was a huge number, I thought, when you think about it. And um, he said it was, he called it resign, uh, people who've resigned without putting their resignation letter. <laughs> I, I obviously don't see that being a problem with you because you seem to have you know, a very enthusiastic team, young team, and, but it would be an interesting uh, uh, a question for, for you to hear your response. Uh, morning, everybody. Morning. This is Lucirio Moto. I'll go back to branding. Uh, and this one is directed straight to you, Ali Khan Sacho. Oh. I think a month ago or so, you tweeted about Cytron's finances being opaque. Are they now transparent? <laughs> and so still I... on, the, on the brand question, uh, to Dande and team, is the 18% still an advantage or is it now a drag onto the company? Because everybody you talk to and Kenyans really like buzzwords. 18%. Mr. 18%. And it becomes a pyramid. So is it at a point with the company where you realize, okay, this 18% is more dragging us behind from getting people because of the word out there or is it still working? Thank you. Can I respond to that question, that the, the one you asked me specifically quickly? I was on an interview at CNBC, and to be honest, I did not have the information in front of me. So my response was, um, uh, was that response. Since that time, and I think, uh, and I'm glad I said it because it, it made Edwin respond to me and made us, um, uh, made us look at the question. I think Edwin has been extremely transparent, and that uh, opacity I was speaking about has been addressed. And I think. As an investor and a commentator and a writer about this, these matters, this is practically the optimal response I would have expected. Um, I wish other people had you know, responded to me in the same way if I'd made a similar comment. So I'd made that comment because I just had not uh, dig, dug in deeply enough. Now that I have, um, I'm, uh, uh, I, I have to say and I have to endorse what I've seen. I, I, can't, I, I can't disagree with it. Um, I, 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 so absolutely, that opacity is no longer there. I'm glad Edwin uh, spent the time to take me through the balance sheet and understand it, and I think he's taken us all through it and been very open about it and also addressed where people, I think, had issues. You know, for example, uh, unrealized gains is, a, is an issue that people would have liked to see, and I, uh, and I think Edwin addressed that in a, in a, in a way to, to make us all comfortable about how he's dealing with it. He has real estate gains, he's only booking them when, it, when, when the time is right. So all round, I would say that comment was made because I was not aware, and uh, I wish everybody, when I make comments like that, would address them um, similarly. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ruth Kabogo, and I'm in charge of commercial in one of the logistics companies in Kenya. So my question is, um, my observation and experience uh, from many of the traditional investor companies is they have launched product after product, and uh, many customers have eventually not really gained. And so when they say 10% or 15%, when you do the actual calculation, it is not really the 10%. So my first question is, when you talk about 18%, is it actual 18% return? That's number one. And then uh, number two is, I've forgotten the second question. <laughs> I'll take you uh, My second question is on, uh, I think when you came here, what you're expecting is action. 
and therefore there are individuals here or institutions or chamas who are asking, so what is the next step? So we've had your presentation was very clear, evidently well thought out, so what is the next step? Excellent, that's what we like to hear. And also the point about investment returns, I think is also a challenge I face when I look at things like unit trusts, how people are producing their returns are different from each other. You know, some will deduct the fee, some won't. Some, you know, so you're completely correct, and I think there's an attempt now by the CMA and other people, starting with the KBA and the cost of credit. You know, 14% is meant to be the absolute interest rate uh, according to the law, but the average here is 18. Point, what was it? 18.25, right? The, the, thanks, Edwin, for the elaborate presentation. I'm Titus. I'm a finance practitioner here in town. My query was more about uh, to seek some more clarity about uh, the concept of matching short-term liabilities to long-term investments, that is real estate. So for instance, the 18% returns that you do pay to investors, are those purely from the sales you've made and not from the collection, not from the investment funds collected from investors? Number two, secondly, am I required as an investor to, to choose a project which I want to invest in? Or in, in other words, is my investment tied to a particular project? So for instance, if I walk to site on today, am I required to select a project which I want to invest in? And if that is the case, is then my return tied to the success of that particular project? If the project does not succeed for one reason or the other, does, then, does, does, it, does it then mean that uh, my investment is, uh, is at risk? And also tied to my earlier time question two and one, on the issue of uh, returns, are my returns, if I invest in a particular project, is the return I get purely tied from the sales made out of that project? Thank you. I'll, I'll start with uh, the lady, sorry, I missed your name. Ruth, I'll start with Ruth's question because it's so simple. Is the 18% really 18%? Yes, it is. The only thing we don't do is that you have to pay your taxes. We are, we are required to withhold 15% of your interest that is paid to you. Everybody does that, even the banks. But is it really 18%? I always say, talk to anyone who... Is there any investor here in CMS? Okay, I can see a hand over there. Uh, you can talk to him. Any other person who's an investor, always we sell by people who are already there. You can go talk to him. I'm sure he has his statement. The only thing that we take is the withholding tax, tax which are required by law. And then what is the next step? You can talk to any of our financial advisors who are here. Uh, if you're a financial advisor, could you just stand so that people know where you are? And not just financial advisor, also staff. You saw some of them. You can talk to any of uh, these guys. That's why we brought them uh, here. Uh, I think that addresses Ruth's question. Titus' question, are you paying the return purely out of the sales? Of course not. That would be so rudimentary. It's like asking a bank, you go and put a deposit today as Titus. They'll take the money. Then they'll lend it to a developer, right? Then tomorrow you will go withdraw your money. They will not go back to that same developer and say, now Titus has come for your money. That's why I talked about a lot about investment management. You have to manage it as a portfolio. Because what is important is, when you give me that one million shillings, and then I put it into real estate, is the real estate value going up? to support the 18% plus my cost. Can I deliver 22%? I have to manage it as a portfolio. So the next day when you are ready to come for your money, the reason why we run it as a portfolio, the portfolio is growing. There'll be somebody else who comes and says, I want to put in a million shillings, and Titus wants to take out his million plus the interest. As long as the portfolio is returning 25%, that's how banks uh, work. The one million that you gave them, that then they lent to the weather KQ. When you go back, they, you don't track the money, the exact amount of money, you track it as a portfolio. So what we have to make sure is that our assets are growing at at least 25% per annum, and our lab, it can then support our liabilities, and then we manage the liquidity to make, and we look at the characteristic of the portfolio. What is the probability? that these people will come for their money. There is no financial institution in the world where if everybody 
came for their money, they would be able to pay. So you have to look at what is the probability. 80% of our investors just roll over their money. And the portfolio is growing at at least 25%. So we are running it as a portfolio management approach. You need that investment management uh, skill set. Uh, so that addresses your issue. You have to manage it as a portfolio. There was a second piece to your question. Oh, yeah, whether investment. Now, an investment manager is a professional. Any professional, whether it's a doctor, a lawyer, the first thing is to really understand what is Titus trying to achieve. We would have to sit with you and we need to understand, are you trying to get fixed income return? Are you willing to take more risk? What is your investment horizon? If you want to take more risk, we'll tell you, <coughs> why don't you even come into the investment as an equity investor alongside us? With your one million in the four billion project, you'll own 0, 0.0 something percent, but then you'll get the 25% that we are also getting. If you if you say, no, 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 I don't want a lot of risk, I'm willing to drop down by 7%, uh, then we'll tell you, fine, you go into CMS that has a diversified portfolio. You can say, I want something in between. I want my return guaranteed, but I want an equity participation. Then we'll tell you, choose all these projects, we'll guarantee your return up to this particular point, then profitability will share. So it really depends on what the investor wants, but the most popular product is where investors say, I don't want to get involved in all those stories, I just want you to offer me a return, and they come through the CMS uh, product. Uh, Lushiri, the, the question you asked about, uh, you, you, you asked Ali Khan, I'll just uh, talk a little bit about it. Every initiative needs to have uh, critiques needs to have people who are going to question it. You have to question uh, everything. It's the essence of a democracy. Uh, in a, it's the essence of a democracy. What's important is that, is it constructive criticism? So when I saw that issue about opacity, I went and watched the clip on CNBC, and I was like, this guy talked for a good five, seven minutes. Then somebody else went and sliced one thing, because he was asked, what about Cyton? Now, he had never sat with Cyton in detail, and he said, balance sheet is opaque. I responded on, on, uh, on Twitter and said, I'll engage Ali Khan Sachu if he wants to understand the balance sheet. And then we engaged, and then he said, after engagement, go explain this to people. Take MindSpeak as a platform. What you find interesting, a lot of these people, when you tell them, why don't you come? they will not come because they, they are not interested in the information. They are interested in the sensational uh, publicity. Anybody who has questions, that's how we grow this brand. You just sit down and explain in detail and be transparent. Is 18% a drag? Not yet, because I showed you 82 billion of projects and a mandate of which we already have 18, uh, 18 billion. Now, the way the projects are designed is that they need to return between 22 and 25. Some will be really stars. There are those who are doing 30%. There are those that are doing 20%. But on average, you need to be 22 to 25. It's just like our cost of capital. It's not all 18. There are those who come and say, I want to give you money for just one month. So we offer them 12% per annum. If you take actually our average cost of funding is 15 point because there's some money that is not locked in for uh, the one year. So before we take the project, we calculated that it needs to be able to deliver that 22 to 25, and it needs to be able to pay off the 15 to 18 percent. So, so far, up to 82 billion, and we want to drive it to 100 billion, certainly it can sustain that 18 percent. Will we always pay 18? Probably not, because as now we get into the pension funds, we will have a lot more money coming in and we'll have to drop the rate. But at this particular point, the best way to bulk up is to continue with our strategy as it is. Then there was a question I've answered, Titus, Ruth, Lucheri. Then there's a question of uh, Jeremy, uh, employees who have resigned but have not handed in their resignation. Uh, they're always everywhere, even at Cyton we have them and they, they know themselves. <laughs> but as long as you have a performance management culture, and as long as you have a culture that is intolerant to underperformers, over time, you will part ways or they'll just pick up and go uh, by themselves. In a firm, I always uh, uh, think it's this book by uh, 
Jack Welch, I forget the name winning, where he says, in a farm you have your top 10, 15%, your bottom 10, 15%, and everybody else is average. Just make sure you are focusing on the 70% that are, that are average, they are the bedrock of the farm. Then make sure that you have stars because they are the ones who are always pushing boundaries, doing product innovation, uh, really the core of the farm, and then find a way over time to separate with the bottom 10 to uh, uh, 15 percent. So as long as you have that culture of separation, uh, it should be able to take care of itself. But without a doubt, you will not always have everybody uh, engaged. You just make sure, as at the end of the day, your revenues far outweigh your expenses, including the expenses for those who are not engaged uh, in the farm. I think I've answered all of them, and I'll try now to move quicker so that we get as many questions as possible answered. Let me ask you a question before I take two more. Where do you believe, Edwin, you're going to be in five years' time? My mother used to tell me, Ali Khan, visualize where you want to be if you want to get there. Where does Edwin visualize himself in five years' time? Is this a pan-African business? Is Edwin crisscrossing uh, Africa, producing better returns for all of us uh, across the continent? I would like to hear what you think. Uh, two more questions. My name is Martin Malinge, and I work at the University of Nairobi. Um, I have to say thank you to Edwin and the team. Every Sunday I get a very detailed uh, report which I use for my investment. My question is, you talked about how employees become shareholders, three months of uh, equal of pay. What about other people who are not employees and want to become shareholders in addition to the CMS? And also, something which was asked, but I think you forgot about it, you are to comment about Cyton Cooperative. Thank you very much, Dan. Now, as far as uh, I like your answer about the brand, I think I was with you in that when you were going through that. Now, the structured uh, investment product that you have just shown, I would like, to, out of curiosity, I want to, to draw the parallels with the REITs, the Real Estate Investment Trust Fund, and what is your take on it as far as Kenya is concerned? That's a good question. Thank you. Um, my name is Andrew. Sorry I came a bit late, so I may not have gotten everything. But uh, I would want you to uh, probably tell us uh, what lists have you considered in uh, your investment approach? Because you have seen some companies like uh, Transcentral that have done very well and at some point they are struggling. Eh? So what kind of uh, lists, the major lists have you considered in your investment and how have you been, uh, how are you addressing them? Or if I could put it a different way, what's keeping you up at, at night, Edwin? Thank you so much. My name is David Kiama. I work with an event management company. My question is, I find your products aimed at a certain uh, group of people, especially the real estate is high ed. Do you have plans maybe to make it to the middle class and the lower class, maybe in the future? Thank you. Let, let me start with David's uh, question. When we started, we, have, we had to go with the surest place, because remember, everything we do has to sort out two issues. The investing client, whom we owe 18%, and the person who's going to live in these uh, particular units. When we did our research, the place with the highest moving product is um, what I would call satellite towns, up, uh, and I keep going to uh, Alma and Ruaka, between 5.5 to 12 million. And when I say highest moving, highest moving in terms of them buying product and paying on time. So that's where we focus a lot of our real estate because we have to service that 18% that Titus was asking about. When you go below that, when you look at the cost of land, then you look at the profile of the uh, client, then you now need a little bit of social and public policy help in terms of government incentive, in terms of money from development finance institutions, and in terms of looking at it as not purely an investment, but also providing a social good. So in that market, it's not yet our market just because we still don't have public policy involved in housing. We still have not been able to attract IFC World Bank money. So right now we've 
focused purely on what we'll call mid-income housing and buyers who are able to service the payment plan uh, on time. But hopefully over time we'll be able to focus on that other market, but cur currently we are really mid-income housing uh, developers. Andrew asked a very good question. It's very easy to answer. Uh, in every case where people have lost money, you came late, the one thing that's always an issue is governance. I don't like to pick on brands, but you've talked about trans, uh, Transcentury. Can you, do you, do you know how the board of Transcentury looked before now the current board? Sorry? Yeah, it was all male friends from one community. Now, which ideas, as, as, uh, as uh, Steve Jobs says, all great things that are done in business requires a team. A team means diverse from different backgrounds, challenging each other. You, it's, there's no group thing. In all cases where people have lost money, it had nothing to do, because if transcentury is an issue, then how come Centum uh, continues to grow? How come other people looked at the opportunity and have now brought in uh, transcentury, I mean, have brought in uh, capital. Kuramo Capital is now the largest shareholder in transcentury. They are changing the board. In all cases, how come Equity Bank is still there? James Mwangi was very smart to bring in Helios, to bring in a, a diversified board. You need, if you look at our board, the reason why it's diverse is to protect the interests of, no, nobody is that good to protect themselves against, for lack of a better word, uh, mediocrity. You need systems, you need governance, and the way to do it is to make sure you have a very good governance system. So for us, we have pretty good governance and we, de we de-risk it through research. If you want to know whether you'll make or lose money, just look at the governance structure. If you look at uh, Nakumat, ask them, was there an investment committee, audit risk committee, HR committee? None. It was just individuals making decisions. So I hope that our risk, our governance and risk management approach, not that I hope I know, our governance and risk management approach is really, really uh, the bedrock of the organization. How do we compare to REITs? I think you've really looked through it. Cyton really is a private REIT. We've taken real estate, sold it, we have contracts that owe us cash flow, and we've taken that cash flow and promised it to an investor at 18 percent and we are collecting what is in between. At some point we will also have a regulated REIT but if you were to really look at, look through the structure end to end, it's a private uh, REIT. Then there was a question that um, Martin asked which is correlated to Maureen's question. Uh, what about the COP, uh, the cooperative product? It's there, you can talk to any of our financial investors but to open it up completely to the public, we have to finish our discussions with uh, the Ministry of Cooperatives. What about shares? If you're interested in shares, we have our shares over the counter. That means it's not yet listed. As a firm, we are no longer selling shares. We sold shares at the beginning, but there are those who bought at the beginning. The price has risen and they are exiting. Ourselves as a senior management, we are locked in. We cannot exit. But there are those who, Cyton has 100 shareholders, there are those who bought a lot of shares at the beginning and they do sell. When they sell, they just send us an email. Uh, as I said, it's over the counter. So you just send an email to otc at cyton.com whether you're interested in selling or buying and we'll match you uh, up. Uh, yeah, we are, we are doing the matching uh, by ourselves. Five years from now, where do I see myself? Where do I see Cyton? We definitely, if you read our vision, is to be Africa's largest alternative investment manager by consistently exceeding uh, client expectations. In terms of exactly where we'll be, I've always taken the approach that at any moment in time, you need to be pragmatic and make the very best decision that you need to make. People always think that we ever even sat and thought about starting Cyton. No, we were just at a board meeting and we disagreed and we said, if that's the way you want to go, then we don't have a future here. Then we sat down and said, now that we don't have a future here, that decision is made, what do we do? We said, but we can go do this uh, by ourselves. So at any particular point, you sit down and say, is it time to go public? Is it time to list? So it's just making the very best decision. I, I'm, I typically don't do this five, ten year plans. You just make sure at any particular point, you are very pragmatic. I was not always, uh, 
CEO, I was not always, uh, I was not always CEO or co-founder of Cyton, I was not always CEO at Britam or uh, an associate at uh, KPMG. I also started right uh, from the very bottom. 20 years ago, I was a waiter in hotels in uh, New Jersey. I was loading trucks. I was um, doing all kinds of night jobs. I've even done security uh, jobs. But at any particular point, you say, now that I'm in New Jersey and I don't have school fees, what do I have to do? Let me go uh, cook in a kitchen. Let me go become a watch. Let me go, go become a driver. But I know I'll not be a driver forever. I'll use it to pay tuition after I finish school. Now I need to get a job in a recognized brand. I'll interview with everyone. But the first one that gives me the job, which is uh, KPMG in New Jersey, that's the one I'll take. I got into KPMG in New Jersey and I was doing taxes for people on a part-time basis. I did taxes for a Kenyan who I knew and I, yes, he's a brilliant guy, but I'm like, this guy is no more brilliant than me and he's making 10 times what I'm making. It doesn't seem to make sense. Since I'm not in accounting for the love of accounting, I will switch from accounting and get into investment banking. So I asked, how do I get into investment, investment banking? I was told, you have to go to one of the Ivy League schools, Stanford, Columbia, uh, Harvard, Wharton. I applied to pretty much all of them and went to the one that would accept me. When I went to Wharton, again, I wanted now to get to an investment bank. I applied to all of them. Lehman accepted me. I got into Lehman, followed my boss to Bank of uh, America. By then, Wall Street was doing great. Global financial uh, crisis hits. There are no bonuses. Salary, salaries are low. I'd always wanted to come back, uh, come back to Kenya. I took uh, six months off, came back, looked around. I actually spent three, three months at uh, Centum. And I, James Moore is a friend. We went to high school together. I told James, there's no, room, th 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 there's no room here for two of us. This is your show. I'll go look for. Uh, something else uh, something else to do uh, so on my confirmation date i left actually went back to the u.s then i was told there's a company called baraka it is interestingly uh, they were a bunch of 30 very wealthy men trying to set up a shop to compete with transcentury by then they were envious with transcentury because it's a group of friends that were doing well so they wanted to also do well they've set up uh, baraka i told them i'll manage this thing but you have to be able to raise money they were not able to raise money but at the point where i told them this thing is not gonna work let me now go back to look for something in wall street one of the members there is doctor was dr benson wairegi who was the ceo of britam he said since you are leaving Baraka, do you want to try this job at, um, at Britam Asset Managers? I'll say, if, for sure, if you give me the CEO job, I'll do it. Then I did it, and other team members joined, and at some point we disagreed, we came and formed Cyton. So a long-winded way to say, um, I cannot tell you for sure, but in terms of operating approach of at this moment, what is the very best decision? Let's make it, let's, let's execute it. That's how we've come. One thing that I know we'll always be doing well, but I don't know exactly where. Who knows, somebody can come in, Blackstone, Goldman, offer us a check that we can't resist, and we tell them, fine, you have it. That, that was very, very good, Edwin. From, from KPMG to Lehman, Bank of America, and here. You know, funny enough, Edwin's talking about James Moria. James Moria also did a mind speak, I think, within the first month of his appointment um, at Centum. And I remember both Nishit and I saying to ourselves, those are some shares we need to buy straight away. I remember walking in Dr. Mwangi's office 11 years ago when I was writing my book. And I'd met all the other bankers from KCB to Barclays and they all said that is going to be a house of cards. And I get to see James and I listen to him for 30 minutes and I walk out of his office and I buy his shares because I knew he was going to do it. And I think the highest compliment I can give Edwin, and Edwin, you know, that, that, that word opacity has been haunting me now for six weeks. <laughs> People have been slicing it and tweeting it and but what it is, it brought us together, it brought you here today, it gave you an opportunity to tell us what you're doing, and I think all of us here in this room are impressed, and quite a few of us will be coming round to buy some of your shares. 
I'd like to thank Edwin for giving us such a frank and open, inspiring discussion. We need more Edwins in our economy. Our economy will grow faster. And therefore, we all support your enterprise and wish you the very best. And thank you for taking the time to come today and speak to us. By the way, if anyone wants a job offer after all, you can come and nab Edwin in the next few minutes before he takes off. <laughs>